We're going to start by meeting the book of Proverbs, the brilliant young teacher. And she's not just smart, she's smart about everything, work, relationships, sex, spirituality. She has incredible insights, things you wouldn't see on your own. Yeah, she would be the perfect friend to have around when you need really specific advice. So what makes her so smart? Well, Proverbs can see things that most people don't see. She believes that there's an invisible creative force in the universe that can guide people in how they should live. And you can't see it, just like you can't see gravity, but it affects everything that we do. So what's this force? Well, in Hebrew, it's called chokhmah, and it usually gets translated into English as wisdom. It's an attribute of God that God used to create the world. And chokhmah has been woven into the fabric of things and how they work. So wherever people are making good or just or wise decisions, they're tapping into chokhmah. And whenever someone's making a bad decision, they're working against chokhmah. Right, or as it says in Proverbs chapter 1, the waywardness of fools will destroy them, but the one who listens to wisdom lives in security. So it's like a moral law of the universe. Yeah, it's a cause-effect pattern, and no one can escape it. And Proverbs personifies all of this as a woman. Yeah, Lady Wisdom. Right, and she roams around the earth calling out, making herself available to anyone who's willing to listen to her and to learn. Which leads to the second thing Proverbs believes, that anyone can access and interact with wisdom and use it to make a beautiful life for yourself or for others. You can create with it like a designer. Yes, in fact, chokhmah in Hebrew isn't simply intellectual knowledge. The word is also used to describe a skilled artisan who excels at their craft, like woodworking or stonemasonry. So you show you possess chokhmah when you put it to work and develop the skill of making a good life. Okay, that makes sense. So let's do this. Let's go find some wisdom. But before you do, Proverbs has one more really important thing to consider. Chokhmah isn't some impersonal force. It's an attribute of God himself. And so in Hebrew thought, your journey to becoming wise has to begin with what Proverbs calls the fear of the Lord. It's this healthy respect for God's definition of good and evil. And true wisdom means learning those boundary lines and not crossing them. Now, all those ideas you just unpacked are in chapters 1 through 9 in Proverbs. But when I think of the book of Proverbs, I think of the collection of sayings, the Proverbs themselves. Tell me about those. Yeah, those are what you find in chapters 10 on to the end of the book. It's a collection of hundreds and hundreds of Proverbs about any and all aspects of life. And chokhmah gets applied to them, resulting in this wise guidance to help you find a path towards success and no matter what you do. If I design my life with these sayings, life is gonna be good. Yeah, or as Proverbs puts it, it'll give health to your bones, prosperity, a long, rich life. Which is a really big claim. But you can see how it's often the case. Wise people, they tend to do better. Things usually work out well for them in life. And so that is the promise and the wisdom of the book of Proverbs. How about we start with some uh, prayer? We'll open with prayer. Lord Jesus... We come before you right now, Lord, with open hearts and ears to hear, Lord, so you can have full authority over our lives. Lord, direct us, lead us, guide us. What to stay away from, what to embrace, what to get near to, what to stay far from, Lord. We're asking you to do that in our hearts, in our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our first slide here. I'm really looking forward to teaching on this one. Who wants to quit their job and go on permanent vacation? Let me see a hand, let me see a hand. Yes, yes, why don't we? Why don't we? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, um, we're broke. That's, that's, that's the main reason, unfortunately, we're, we're broke. And the second reason is it would look a lot more, because of our financial situation, it'd look a lot more like being a homeless person than being on vacation on a beach somewhere. So, uh, so I was like, yay, wait a minute, I don't wanna be homeless. <laughs> So uh, we just decided that staying the course of our jobs, et cetera, our life is probably the best way to go about our life, right? We made a decision. Now we want, throw up our hands, stick it to the man, I ain't coming back here no more, but instead <laughs> we're gonna show up to work on Monday, aren't we? Boo. Okay, so yeah, thanks Heath, yeah. That, that's the difference between a wise decision and a foolish decision, right? 
you, we want to do this, but we decide it's better in the long run for us to make the wise decision. So wisdom says we cannot just quit our jobs and run off and lay on a beach somewhere. Wisdom says that's not the best way to approach our life. But I don't know about you, but I have made many unwise decisions before. I have been there once or twice where, once or twice, get it? it's kind of a joke actually, a couple of thousand times where I didn't do the right thing, I did the foolish thing and not the wise thing, and we're going to look at today how we can be as uh, wise as possible, how we can embrace this principle of wisdom. Over this sermon series, we're going to look at what wisdom is, we're going to go through the book of Proverbs together, and uh, so that's what this sermon series is, we're going to be adulting, because being adults makes we, means we make decisions wiser, right? Wiser, smarter. Uh, adulting is hard, friends. Being wise is hard. Making good decisions is hard. But we can't build a great life unless we make good decisions. And the Bible has a lot to say about this, a whole lot to say about this. If we build, truly build a successful life, it must be built upon wisdom, good decision making. It's built into the very fabric of our very lives. So these seven weeks, we're going to look at the seven major concepts of the book of Proverbs, and uh, which brings us to our next slide here. Let's read the Bible together, okay? There are 30, this is a, if you have the Bible app, you don't have it, you can download the Bible app. It's just in the picture you're seeing right here. It's uh, that little logo right there. It's the number one. You put like in your, in whatever, Apple or Android, you put in that Bible, this is what's going to come up. And if you search in plans, you will see one called the, uh, let's see, what's the word one we're doing here? It's called... Uh, wisdom of Proverbs. Yeah, the wisdom of Proverbs is what we're going to need. Okay, so find the one called Wisdom of Proverbs, and you can do this. They also have a new thing here on the Bible app where you can invite other people to join you in this Bible reading. So uh, maybe, you're, maybe your spouse or maybe some family members, you can all read it together, and then you can even kind of chat in there a little bit like, here's what this meant to me. It's, it's really neat. Matter of fact, the opening video that we just showed was part of this, the people that put together this particular Bible plan, okay? 32 days, not very long. The sermon series is much longer than that, but we can even get the, the whole book of Proverbs in in 32 days, very simply, basically reading about a chapter a day, okay? So um, if I hope you do that with us. I hope you're deciding to put the Word of God in your own life. It's a simple Simple, easy way, and we can encourage each other to do it. All right, the next slide. The definition of wisdom. Now, the Hebrew word for wisdom is chokmah. Chokmah. It's like chokmah, but you got to put a ch at the beginning of it. So, hopefully, your vocal cords are cleared out and you don't. Chokmah. It means life skills. Life skills. I really like the way that that intro video uh, talked about wisdom. It is an attribute of God that is woven into everything. And if we do the right decisions, if we have chokmah, we will build a successful life. Now the opposite of wisdom is, the root word for the opposite of wisdom is, is twisted. It's twisted. Being a fool, the word for fool in the Hebrew is rooted in the word for twisted. Why is that? Because when we see things in a twisted point of view, we are being a fool. Unfortunately, we make decisions, don't we, time and time again. I mean, I won't, I won't ask you to raise your hands, but how many of us have had a situation where we dated somebody sometime and we're really glad we're not dating that person now, right? Amen. Right, yes, amen. <laughs> because at the time, we didn't realize what was really going on, correct? We, were, we had a twisted view. We were being foolish. We had a twisted view of what really was happening. And now we see hindsight is twenty twenty. We see a little more clearly. We realize, <laughs> oh boy, goodness gracious, right? Right? Why? Because our view was twisted. We were being foolish. Our view was not clear. And God wants us to have a clear vision of what we are, where we are, who we are, and where we're going. And every decision being made with that clarity of understanding builds a great life. Our next slide, a little background to the book of Proverbs. All right, it was written by Solomon, David, King David's son, Solomon, becomes king. And uh, he does a really neat thing. Uh, he asks God, oh, God comes to him and actually says, what, I'll give you anything, what do you want? And he says, I want to be wise so I can rule your people. 
And so what does King Solomon get? God says, because you asked for such a great thing, you asked for wisdom instead of the death of your enemies or money, because you asked for such a great thing, I'm going to give you not just the wisdom, I'm going to give you all those other things as well, the wealth and all those other things. This book was written 2,700 years ago, almost 3,000 years ago, but it's amazing how accurate the book of Proverbs is to our very lives right now because human beings are the same and God knows that. People talk, oh, the Bible, that's a bunch of ancient garbage that doesn't apply to today. I'm like, have you read this thing lately? You can open up a newspaper and open up the Bible and basically go by side by side. It's amazing what God is showing us right now about how people act and how people live and how they're going to live in the last days. I think the Bible is more relevant than ever right now. The book of Proverbs is more relevant than ever. We all know people that are out there making really crazy decisions, and it's time for us to make some good decisions. All right, let's go through some scriptures here today. We're going to go through Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, and then i got some stuff to share with those uh, concepts. So Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Verse 2, their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right, just, and fair. Now these Proverbs, verse 4, will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. Verse 5, let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser, and let those with understanding receive guidance. By exploring the meaning in these Proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and the riddles, the fear of the Lord, verse 7, is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Right out of the gate, the book of Proverbs comes up with this amazing stuff. And it talks to you about the purpose, and that's our next slide, of the book of Proverbs. Verse 2, teach people wisdom and discipline, help them understand the insights, and the purpose to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives. Everything we do at our church, friends, is built upon you being a success. This is why we do what we do. Everything we do, the music, the teaching, the kids' ministries, all of it, youth, you keep putting, you can, everything we do is all built around you being a success. That's why we do it. And this sermon series is to get us all looking at what the Bible says so that your life can be a success. Now, one of the things that people do, unfortunately, when we start talk, talking about wisdom and foolishness, is we all have people's, my, uh, people's names and faces coming to us, right? People that need to make a little better decisions, right? Let's all instead, let's personify this and look into our own hearts, into our own lives today, and make sure that we are even wiser. What? That's what the verse just said, that the wise become even wiser still. There's some words that uh, jump out to me in these, uh, in these particular verses. One, discipline and disciplined lives. That doesn't sound like much fun. We don't want to talk about that nowadays, do we? People are so very funny. They want God to make their life great. They don't want to make their life great. God is not in the business, friends, of making your life great. Uh-oh. He's in the business of making you great. There's a big difference. He's not in the business of making you comfortable. He's in the business of making you in the righteousness and in the image of God. And your comfort is not his main priority. That's why when we talk about the book of Proverbs, discipline, discipline lies, the word understanding, right, just, and fair. These are awesome words. These are important words. But this is where God's saying, I'm going to teach you how to do it, not do it for you. I'm going to teach you what it takes to be a success from what I'm teaching you inside of your heart and life, not just do it for you. Because God is, God is making children. We are the sons and daughters of God. So he's teaching you how to make good decisions. He's teaching you how he created the world with wisdom so that you can go forth in the same uh, mentality of the sons and daughters of God. 
Our next slide, the key is to truly listen. Verse 5, the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. Now this series is all about application. Nothing we're going to share with you in this sermon series is something you've never heard before. Nothing. But all of it is stuff that very few of us actually apply. I'm not going to teach you anything that you've not heard before. I'm going to teach you things that we don't listen well that we don't actually listen well. See, we've all had parents or grandparents or a pastor or a school teacher or a mentor teach us these principles. We've all known these principles, but the key is actually living it out. Now, I got a question for you, friends. Can a person change? Yes. Can someone act differently? Can someone live differently? Yes, God is in the person changing business, right? Of course he can. He specializes in changing people. But he changes those that listen. He doesn't just go around changing people. Every one of us, right, that's been changed by God for the better, how did you get to that place? You had to put away the other voices and tune in to the voice of God, right? He changes those who listen. Faith comes by hearing. We change by hearing and actually listening. Yeah. All right, I got a little game we're gonna play. It's called, which one's the best choice? I wish I had some game show music. I won't sing it for you, but fill in your own game show music. Um, Okay, play a little game. What's called, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna ask you two things and you're gonna just tell me which one is the best choice. Okay, now, these are easy. This is, these are not trick questions. Okay, if you're like, I'm not sure where he's going with this. These are not trick questions. Okay. Should you save money or should you spend money? Save money. Oh, wait a minute, but why don't we do that? We were all just in agreement that you should save money, not spend money, right? Oh, but we don't do that. Hmm. Should you wake up and go to work each day or lay there and do nothing? You should go to work. Some of you are like, ah. Should you buy a house you can afford or should you buy a house you cannot afford? Oh, okay. Should you treat someone like dirt or should you be grateful for the people God has placed in your life? Oh, it's amazing. So we don't do these, but we know these. Should we take care of the things you already own or just let them decay and fall apart? Oh, okay. How about, should we abuse our body with cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, etc., or should we not put those things in our body? You don't want to answer that one, I see. Some of you just like, they've quit answering now. Should you stay at the job you're at until you find a new one, or should you rage quit, storm out? (laughs) Stay until you find another one. That's right. Should you you buy a brand new motorcycle without telling your wife, or should you not buy that brand new motorcycle without telling your wife? You should not, if there was any question to this. There's an obvious. Maybe that one's more personal. (laughs) Should you eat things that are healthy and good for you, or should you eat whatever you want, however however much you want? Oh, okay. Should you be patient and wait for the right time and place to pass that slow car, or should you just put your foot on the gas and hope for the best? (laughs) You should be patient. We, we, I'm gonna make sure I include myself, should be patient. Okay, so all of those were what? Common understanding. Our next slide here, friends. The wise choice is usually the obvious choice. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public squares. She calls to the crowds along the main street to those gathered from the city gate. The obvious one is the wise one. Now, we just went through a big list there, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm pretty sure none of us came out of that list doing all of those things. Right? The point is, we all knew exactly what to do. We just don't do it. 
Now, why don't we do it? That is a very, very deep question that we're going to talk about over several weeks. We all know the answer to those things, but yet we don't live like we know the answer to those things. We all agreed. There was not like, I mean, you may agree, disagreed for fun, but you all knew what the answer was truly was, right? But we don't live like that because the wise choice is almost always the obvious choice. Notice here in these verses, wisdom is screaming in the streets. See, there's this kind of false idea about wisdom that you can find it. If you really look real hard, there's hidden wisdom. And uh, by the way, I was watching the Indiana Jones yesterday. I was watching the Indiana Jones movie. And, uh, you know, like, oh, there's a hidden clue that you can find this special thing. If you have wisdom, we can find it in the, the ancient temple. No, wisdom is screaming in the street. It's not a hidden thing at all. It's actually screaming out, hey, hey, you, stop it. Hey, why are you doing that? Quit it. Hey, you're destroying your life. Hey, you make some better decisions, please. Right? Because the problem is not, there's not hidden wisdom. It's actually screaming at us. We're just not listening, friends. We even know what to do. We're not doing it. And it's time to drop all of that, right? It's time to drop all of that and hear the wisdom screaming right at us, all of us. It's loud, it's obvious, and it's easily seen by everyone. That's how wisdom is. Our next slide, true wisdom learns from every mistake. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1, verse 30 and 31. They rejected my advice, this is wisdom speaking here, and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way choking on their own schemes. Eat the bitter fruit of living their own way. Wisdom, friends, will correct us if we let it. Wisdom, uh, it, the key to wisdom is, is this word attention that you see here. Pay attention to things. God doesn't mind us learning by doing. He just really doesn't like it when we don't learn by doing. Now, uh, once again, we don't want you to raise your hand, but we all know people, right, that keep making the same bad decision over and over again. And you're like, how can they not see it? How in the world can they not see it? And then you're like, oh, here they go again. And you're like, oh, yeah. surprise, surprise, X many months later, it happened just like that again, right? And we're all on the outside looking in going, duh. because they commit the same mistake over and over again, they're on the carousel of bad choices, and they just keep doing laps on the carousel of bad choices, yet they don't see it. It's because it's one thing to learn from our mistakes. I mean, it's one thing that we, we gotta learn to learn from our mistakes. Let me say it that way. We gotta learn to learn from our mistakes, friends. So we don't do more carousel stuff. God's okay with you making a mistake. He's not okay with you making it again. But not learning from it. Not going, all right, time out. How did I get in that situation? What inside my heart or mind is not right? What inside my heart and mind is twisted that's making me not see things accurately? And from my wrong perspective comes my bad choices. You still with me today? It's easy to see things happening in other people. You know what it's hard to see things happening within us? It's so clear. Now, why is it so easy to see into someone else's heart and say, well, they should obviously do this, and they should obviously not do that, but yet when it comes to our own life, we can't, because it's twisted. Our perception is twisted. Now, our next slide, it's all built upon the foundation of knowing God. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. It's the beginning of wisdom. Here's the idea. We are in a relationship with God, right? That's, that's how this works. You are in, through Christ, you're in a relationship with God. How beautiful is that, right? Now, God just happens to be an infinitely knowledgeable being. He has all the knowledge there is to have about everything. He built the universe. He knows what happened, what is happening, and what will happen. He knows all of that. So when we are in a relationship with God, we are tapping into an infinitely knowledgeable being. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the knowledge. It starts with saying, 
I'm kind of small, you're kind of big, how about you help me, Lord? I don't know what I'm doing, you know everything. How about you help me, Lord? That's putting it as kindergarten as I can. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See, you're coming to the fear. It's not fear in the sake of like, oh, you're a big guy going to hurt me. It's fear that, that when you see the massiveness of this being that we have befriended, you will fall to your knees. The Bible talks about when that every knee shall bow. God's not going to force every knee down. As soon as eternity happens, as soon as you close your eyes for the last time, you will look into the eyes of an infinitely knowledgeable, infinitely large being, and you will hit your knees. You will, because you, because of the scale and the scope of this infinitely knowledgeable being compared to the littleness of you, you will be afraid. You will have a, a, a reverence for the scale and the size and the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding of this being that we befriended. That's the beginning of the wisdom. I'm little, he's big, very big. I want to be with him, near him. I want to know what he knows. I want to know what he, I want him to look into my heart and peer into my life and begin to alter and change things so that I can get to where he wants me to be, right? Now, the year is 1994, and I made a foolish decision. I did not have the fear of the Lord over my life, honestly. I wanted, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say it, I wanted to be a record producer. Yeah, I know. That's what I wanted to do for a living. I wanted to be a record producer. You're like, well, that's crazy. I know. I'm telling you how foolish I was. Remember that. God wanted me to do what I'm doing right now. I said, no thanks. I'll do my own thing. I know you know the future, Lord. I know you know everything about me. You know everything about everything. But still, somehow, I don't trust you. I'll do it my own way. So I went to St. Joseph's College, which now no longer exists, unfortunately. And uh, it wasn't long before God said, what are you doing? I'm doing what I want. Stop it! You'll never be happy doing that. You'll never be a success doing that because wisdom is the key to success, which is found in the Lord. So mid-semester, I stopped what I was doing and I went to, uh, went to California, decided to turn my life over to Christ. I had no idea what I was doing except I knew I was going to serve the Lord completely with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength and the rest, friends, is the path that God's got for me. But I thought I was going to do it myself and I made a very foolish decision, a decision that cost me a lot of money, right? College is expensive. It cost me all kinds of things. Some of the most sinful things I ever did was in that chunk of time right there. Some of the stuff I'm most embarrassed about was in that chunk of time right there. And I'm saying all that to say, look, and I'm not preaching to you today because I've made all these great decisions and I'm, I'm preaching today because I too have been a fool. I make foolish decisions even right here and right now. But in Christ, in Christ, we can learn. We can get off the carousel of bad decision making. We can get off the carousel and decide, you know what, I'm sorry, Lord, and I pray that each of you does exactly what Heath did, which is stop the carousel and jump off. Jump off. Go the direction God wants you to go. Make sure it stops first. Jump off. <laughs> and go the direction God wants you to go, because in that is true happiness, in that is true success, in that is the chokmah, the real wisdom that comes from the Lord alone, friends, okay? Our application slide today. James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you, and submit every decision to God before you make it. If you lack wisdom, ask God. Now, if you're thinking, well, I don't lack wisdom, that's pride. It's coming up in a couple weeks. <laughs> every one of us should say, Lord, I don't know what I to do. I don't know how to do it. I lack wisdom. And it says, the Bible says here in James, that he's going to give it generously. I'm not going to give you a little ounce of wisdom. He's going to give you all the wisdom you need to make every decision you need. But the key is in that second point, you take those decisions to the Lord and you say, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? How do you want me to act? How do you want me to react? How do you want me to respond? And that is the hope mom we're talking about. Amen?
Let's take this seriously, friends, right here, right now in our hearts. If I can have every head bowed, please, and every eye closed, please.